Hey guys, so today we have another concept car video and we're going to take a look at the Chrysler Kronos which was a flagship luxury car with a big V10 engine that Mercedes felt threatened by. If you're not familiar with my other concept car videos, make sure to check those out on the top right corner as I've done many on the various Mopar vehicles. You can find the video outline on screen where today we're going in depth on the background info, exterior and interior, performance, future plans and looking at why the Chrysler Kronos was cancelled. So let's get started. So the Kronos was first shown off at the 1998 Chicago Auto Show, and the plan was for this to be the flagship vehicle for the Chrysler brand. Chrysler had been in search of an icon for the brand that would give them a better and cheaper luxury vehicle to compete with the likes of Lincoln and Cadillac. Car designer Osamu Shikado was flipping through some old car photos when he saw the Chrysler D'Elegance concept car, which was built in 1952 and unveiled for the first time in America in 1953 and that was his inspiration for designing the Kronos. If you put the two side by side, you can definitely see some resemblance. Other influences were the 1955 Falcon concept and the 1953 Special. So on the exterior, the Kronos concept has a very powerful and dramatic presence. Chrysler chose to give it light chrome blue paint, aerodynamic styling, a long sweeping body, a very steep windshield, and jewel-like headlights. The grille that was used was a similar look to that D'Elegance concept, some other cool features that Chrysler worked into the car were wheel center caps that would always stay upright even when the wheels were spinning, and dual center tailpipes at the rear of the car, which would later be copied by some other manufacturers. It was a long, wide vehicle, stretching out 205 inches in length and 76 inches in width. The wheels were pushed forward, and they were huge for the time, 20 inches in the front and 21 inches in the rear. Designers didn't bother adding any door handles to the concept, instead having them open with the click of a key fob. The cabin was shifted towards the rear, which gave the Chrono some similar proportions to some of the classic Virgil Exner designs from the 1950s. Interestingly enough, the Kronos was sketched out as a coupe at first by the designer Chicago, who again, as we mentioned, took his inspiration from the 1953 Chrysler D'Elegance when he saw photos of the vehicle. That original D'Elegance was built by Ghia Coachworks in Italy, with Chrysler's Virgil Exner overseeing the development. Chicago had took a liking to some of the chrome pieces, the sculpted front end, and the unique grille, and he drew up one of his own designs. Jack Grain, who was the design studio chief at Chrysler, suggested Chicago make the Kronos into a sedan, and that's exactly what happened. And Grain also did say that, quote, This car really owes its inspiration to the 1953 Chrysler D'Elegance concept vehicle. End quote. I will point out that the production model Chrysler 300C definitely looks like it's got some inspiration from the Kronos as well. And all in all, the concept cost over $2 million US just to produce the one copy of it. Moving on to the interior, it looks extremely elegant and would probably have blown the luxury competition away. I don't have too many photos unfortunately, but it really does look like something that should have been the flagship for Chrysler. There were leather seats, walnut trim dash panels, and a hand wrapped leather steering wheel. They also decided to add a humidor, which is a humidity controlled box used to store cigars and cigarettes. And that could be found in the hand sewn center console. The gauges were beautifully set in the aluminum, a nice change to see from all the digital screens nowadays. The one complaint with the people who test drove the car was that the inside was quite cramped due to that design of the very long hood and rear end, which left less room for the cabin. Moving on to performance, the Kronos was pretty impressive on paper, packing a single overhead cam 6 liter V10 engine under the hood that made 350 horsepower. The engine was not related to the Viper V10, but instead it was built from three different Jeep 4.7 liter V8s that were kind of mashed together. The transmission that Chrysler chose to use was a 4 speed automatic with no manual option, and this was done as most of the flagship luxury cars were using automatics to maintain the elegance of the vehicle, foregoing the sportier manuals. And of course, the car was also rear-wheel drive. The Kronos weighed in at 4,209 pounds, which is almost identical to the Chrysler 300C and the Dodge Charger in 2005 and 2006. The car also used a modified Viper suspension in the front and rear, along with a unibody structure and high-strength steel chassis. No numbers were released for other performance metrics, things like 0-60 to and quarter mile times, or even torque. So as I've stated, Chrysler had some pretty big expectations for the Kronos to help carry the brand and set a precedent for the years to come. Tom Gale, who was the executive vice president of product development for Chrysler at the time, was one of the people who were really pushing for this to become the ultimate Chrysler icon. He said, quote, If you're going for the flagship of the Chrysler brand, and the Chrysler Kronos clearly is, then everything must add up. The look must fit, 
the quality must be appropriate, and the ride must be exhilarating. It has to totally quench the thirst for perfection." End quote. So Tom Gale was the one leading the search for the Chrysler icon that would raise Chrysler back to its traditional place, as we mentioned, a cheaper and better alternative to Cadillacs and Lincolns. Remember, this was a time where there was little to separate the Dodge, Plymouth, and Chrysler brands, aside from just suspension tuning and sheet metal, so this car would have gone a long way to distinguish Chrysler and bring them near the top of the luxury market once again. Now we get to the more frustrating part of the video, the cancellation. Unfortunately, when Daimler Chrysler was formed, executives thought that the luxury cars should not be made by Chrysler but should stay within Mercedes. Of course, in the so-called merger of equals, Mercedes didn't want Chrysler taking away any of their sales and market share with this stunning and well-performing luxury sedan. The Daimler executives just wouldn't stand for that internal competition, and they are the ones that did not allow the car to go into production. Feels like a story that I've told over and over. As much as Tom Gale wanted the car to be produced, Bob Eaton was the chairman and CEO of Chrysler and he was ahead of Gale in the company, and he of course prevented the production as well. And if you remember, Eaton was responsible for the sale of Chrysler Corporation to Daimler-Benz, so he was probably in their corner, at least somewhat. If Gale was the head of Chrysler, we probably would have seen the vehicle produced. Plain and simple, I believe this car should have been built, and it would have made for a wonderful flagship for Chrysler. It was elegant and carried itself so well on the road. Inside and out, it was exactly what you'd expect from a nice luxury car, and then some. And as I mentioned, Chrysler was using a lot of identical platforms with Dodge, Plymouth, and Chrysler, so this could have accelerated the start to end that and really differentiate Chrysler itself as a luxury vehicle from those other brands. I think this is just a huge missed opportunity. So just in closing to summarize everything, Chrysler wanted the Kronos to be their icon, a cheaper and better alternative to Cadillacs and Lincolns. This was a powerful and good looking car, and it would have fit the bill as that icon car for Chrysler, but Mercedes and Daimler did not want Chrysler making any luxury vehicles that might take away from Mercedes' sales, and the plans were cut. Some of the design elements from the Kronos did end up in the Chrysler 300C, and I guess that did end up being the Chrysler icon years later. However, Chrysler never really put the same efforts into making another luxury car like the Kronos. So that's the end of this video guys, what do you think of the 1998 Chrysler Kronos concept? Do you like this car and think that it was a big missed opportunity for Chrysler like I do? Let me know down in the comment section below. Hopefully you enjoyed the video and make sure to like and subscribe for more Mopar content and let me know if you do want to see other concept car videos like this one. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video.